Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. In this lab, we will be discussing about installation and configuration of vCenter Server 6.5. As you might be knowing, vCenter Server provides a centralized platform for management, operation, resource provisioning, and performance evaluation of virtual machines and hosts. vCenter Server can be installed on Windows platform or it can be deployed as a virtual appliance, which is a pre-configured Linux-based virtual machine. In this particular lab, we will be discussing about installation and configuration of vCenter Server 6.5 for Windows. So let's get started. So let's browse through our vCenter 6.5 ISO image. So, so I'm going to install 6.5 version of vCenter server and this specific build which I'm going to use is 8815520. So for installation, just mount this ISO device, click on auto run, and this is our vCenter server installer. If you see on the left side, vCenter server for Windows. So to proceed with installation, click on install. It takes a bit of time in, pre in preparing system for recent installation. So let's wait for few minutes meanwhile if you see the the base platform what i'm using for vcenter server 6.5 installation is vcenter server 2k12 r2 data center edition now if you see the installer has started preparing for inst preparing this system for recent installation. Now here we are waiting for the installer to complete all the initialization process. Okay, so now click on next to proceed with installation. Accept the terms of the license agreement, click on next. Now, this is very important wizard where we need to decide which kind of deployment models we want to choose it for a vCenter server installation. As of now, VMware is having a two kind of deployment models. First one is embedded deployment and second one is external deployment. Now the only difference between these two deployment model is basically uh, basically your vCenter server and the PSC are the are you installing on the same system or on a different system? So if your deployment of vCenter so if you are installing vCenter server with the embedded PSC, we have to choose the deployment model as embedded deployment. If you want to deploy vCenter server with external PSC, you have to choose deployment model as external deployment. Now when I say embedded deployment, it means your vCenter server and your PSC, both would be installed on a same system or same virtual machine. Whereas an external PSC, vCenter server would be installed on one system and P platform services controller or PSC would be installed on another system. As you can see clearly on the graphical view where in the embedded if you see the psc component and vcenter server both are running on a same vm or host whereas in the external deployment your psc is running on some other vm or host and your vm or your vcenter server is running on some different machine we usually use external psc deployment for two reasons the first reason is high availability or scalability and the second reason is whenever you want to link multiple vCenter server 
to a single PSC. In that particular scenario, we the, the recommended the only way of uh, deploying vCenter server is with external PSC. Now in our particular lab, we are going with the deployment model as embedded PSC. So select this vCenter server and embedded platform services controller. Click on next. Give a system name. So I'll give a system name. Go vc one dot kvmlab.local now sso domain so by default vsphere creates sso domain as a vsphere.local if you want you can give any customized name for your own sso domain i'll go with the default one so let's go with the vsphere.local the username for sso is administrator let's give a single sign on password so i'll give password for sso user Site name is let's keep default first site. So click on next. Now in this wizard, it asks for your vCenter server service account information. So if you want to have, if you want to create a specific user account, you can go and select this option. Or if you want to go with the default local system account, it will you can go with this Windows local system account. So we'll go with the default local system account, which is our administrator. Click on next. Now in this wizard, it asks for the database. The vCenter server, all of the inventory objects or services which are managed by vCenter server, they are all stored in the vCenter server database. In embedded database, the default database is supported is, if you see, it's a VMware Postgres. If you have any external database, you can always select a user external database, define your system DSN connection and then it will, this vCenter server will be connected to that external database. In our lab, I'm going to use an embedded, embedded database. Click on next. These are the few of the ports which are being used during installation of vCenter server. For example, for HTTPS, it uses well-known port is 443. For secure platform services controller, for secure token services, it uses port 7444. For web client, we use 9443 and heartbeat, we use 902. So these are the default ports which are used during vCenter server deployment. Click on next. And now if you see, it show, in this wizard, it shows your embedded platform services controller is going to use around approximate 6 GB of space and it is going to save all its respective files in this particular location, C program files VMware and your vCenter server related data would get would be stored in this C program data VMware folder. So this is a location. Click on next. If you want to improve your customer experience improvement program, you can join the VMware CIP program. For now, I'll just uncheck this thing. Click on next. This is the overall summary of our vCenter server installation. So you can just review it. Click on install. And now if you see your installation has triggered or it has started in this stage if you see it is installing a required component for vCenter server installation for example VMware identity platform software development kit the vSphere console components so on Now at this stage, it has it has started vCenter services or various vCenter services like VMware Component Manager, your SSO services, lifecycle services, which are getting started now at this particular phase of the installation. Like as you could as you could see earlier, it has installed the Postgres installer as a component, and now it is starting VMware Postgres database services.
Now it is starting VMware vSphere Web Client Services. Okay, I think uh, installation is about to finish. So now it is starting VMware Performance Chart. Ch chart Services. Okay, so as you could see, then the installation is completed successfully. And if you, you can click on finish and then launch your vSphere web client or if you want to access your vSphere server, you can access it through vSphere web client and you can click it directly here itself. So as you could see, the installation of vCenter server is pretty straightforward. Right, so let's go and access our vCenter server. So if you could see, it take us to the vCenter server, which is our vc1, vc-01a.govmlab.local, vSphere client. So as you know, there is no vSphere c -sharp based client supports with the vSphere 6.0 onwards, right? So you could always access vCenter server with your with web client. Or, or HTML5 is client. So click on advanced, proceed. And now what you see is basically this is our vCenter server web client. Just to give a credential of your vCenter server. So we gave it during installation at the username. If you remember the local system account, we have used it. So the username was administrator and the SSO domain, what we had created was vSphere.local. Right, so let's give administrator at the rate of vSphere.local and password of this user. Click on login. Oops, uh, that seems to be issue with uh, Adopt Flash, Flash Player because maybe uh, it could not reach out to the internet to get the to Adopt Flash Player. So let me just fix it. Okay, so I have fixed that Adopt Flash Player issue. So if you see, this is my vCenter server, vc-018.govmlab.local. And if you could see, we have a, two different clients to access this vCenter server. The first one is our web client, which requires Adobe e Flash Player. And the second is basically HTML 5 based client, which does not have any dependency on Adobe Flash Player. So let's access our vCenter server through web client. Again, give credentials of our vCenter server, user password. And now if you see, we didn't hit that Adobe Flash Player issue. So just, just make sure that uh, your, your browser is having a latest Adobe Flash Player if you're accessing your vCenter server through web client. And now if you see, this is our vCenter server. So we are successfully logged in to our vCenter server 6.5. See about it about VMware vSphere, and this is our 6.5, right? So, as you could see, uh, the installation of vCenter Server 6.5 was pretty straightforward, and the web based access it makes our life really easy for the management of our virtual infrastructure. Now, if you want to switch to your HTML5 based client, you can just click here and it will take you to the, the new client which VMware has come up with. And it, and it is purely based on based on HTML5 client. So this is our HTML5 based client. So that's all we have in this particular lab. Thank you. I hope you guys like this video.